So welcome today to our Picture and Language Seminar. Today is special because it's our 25th talk that will be on YouTube. And we have a number of interesting upcoming talks next week. David Evans, the week after Jenggan Wong. And you can see a list of speakers for successive weeks. And today for our 25th talk, we're very happy to have Wenqing Ren. He's a postdoctoral fellow at Harvard and we'll be talking about joint work with Zheng Wei and Sebastian. They have a new set of equations, which is very exciting for studying the question of categorification. So Wrenching, why don't you share your screen and start? Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Well, thank you, Arthur, uh, for the introduction. And uh, it is a great pleasure to be uh, able to give a talk at the Mathematical Picture Language Seminar. And as Arthur just mentioned, today I'm going to talk about a joint project with Zhang Wei Liu and Sebastian Palcock from Tsinghua University. Uh, we're now currently working on several papers about this project and hope that they will come out uh, in a few weeks. So first, uh, let me give a simple outline of today's talk. Uh, I would like to explain the two words in the title, namely what we mean by categorification and triangular presum equations. So uh, in the part of categorification, I'll first talk about fusion categories, which have been playing an important role in both mathematics and physics. And the fusion categories are completely determined by their key data called F symbols as generalization of Wigner's 6J symbols from representation theory. A coherence condition must be satisfied by those F symbols, which is called the Pentagon equation. Therefore, to construct new fusion categories, the most direct way is to solve the Pentagon equation Pentagon equation for F symbols. However, it is not an easy task to do so because in general, the equation system of equation will be too large and too complicated. Therefore, in the second part, I'll talk about uh, triangular presum equations, uh, which is a new method to solve for F symbols. Uh, with the with the, from the perspective of uh, triangular presum equations, we can try to look forward Oh, sorry, uh, we can expect to find a good localization strategy so we can solve F symbols step by step. And this method has been working quite well in many examples we're interested in. Therefore, in the end, I'll talk about one of its applications, which is on the near group category, which first discovered by Izumi in 1993, and it has attracted attention of many mathematicians since then. Okay. So let's start with the first part. As we said that uh, fusion categories have been a central subject in mathematics and also have tremendous important applications in physics, such as uh, the theory of Anion and the topological quantum commutation led by Michael Friedman and Zheng Han Wang and has been widely used in condensed matter physics to study topological orders. So before I gave a formal description of fusion categories, it might be a good idea to talk about one of the most basic example, which will be familiar to most of people. That is, let G be a finite group, then we can talk about the representation category. In this category, the objects will be representations of the, this finite group, while the simple objects are the irreducible ones. And also, we have morphisms, which are nothing but G invariant map between these representations. Of course, from Mass 101, we know, that, we know that there are a lot of more structures on the representations of a finite group. Say you can take direct sum and decompose uh, representations. Decompose, you can decompose representations. And of, also, you can take tensor product of representations and those G invariant maps. All these structures will be captured in the concept of fusion category. So let us summarize this basic data for fusion category in a concise way. First, we have simple objects, which is a finite collection, uh, it's, which is a finite set of, uh, sorry. Uh, so first we have the simple objects, uh, a finite collection of simple objects listed here. 
And then we have the tensor functors, uh, which allow us to take tensor product of objects and the morphisms. In particular, we recalled the tensor product of two simple objects uh, and its decomposition in this formula. This is uh, also known as the fusion rules. Uh, moreover, we can um, define a dual object for a simple object. This is analogous to taking contragradient representation of a representation that will provide us with the involution on, on the simple objects. This simple, uh, this basic data of a fusion category actually determines a ring structure on the simple objects. Namely, we can define a multiplication exactly as a fusion rule. The, exactly as a fusion rule. This actually gave us a ri uh, this ring in general will be called a fusion ring. And when it comes from a fusion category, we call it the authentic ring of this fusion category. Um, as you can see that the authentic ring only carries the basic data of a fusion category. Therefore, it is much easier to look for new examples of fusion rings and uh, try seek for new examples of fusion rings. So an interesting and a natural question might be, can you go backwards? And if, if you can, this procedure will be called categorification of a fusion ring. And of course, you need to ask yourself, uh, what, are the missing key, what, the, what are the missing data when you pass a fusion category to, the, to its authentic ring? And the answer is exactly the F symbols. So, uh, before I define F symbols, first uh, uh, allow me to introduce a picture language which has been widely used to study fusion category. And let C be a fusion category and alpha be a morphism uh, in this category. Then we can represent it alpha as a picture that is a M plus, it's a M degree M plus M edges, uh, degree M plus M vertex. And this picture note, this is not only a notation, but actually it uh, captures the structure of fusion category in the sense that say we have another morphism in this uh, fusion category, then we can represent a tensor product of this two morphism by putting the picture along the side. Along the side. And if happens that um, this two morphism can be composed, then we will just uh, represent this, the composition of the morphisms to be stacking the picture from the corresponding picture from the top to bottom. Okay, so now with this notation, a picture language in, the, in your hand, we can define an F symbols. So an F symbol is indexed by six objects and four morphisms is given by this formula. As you can see here, the picture on the left uh, represented a morphism uh, from the space, uh, represent a morphism from I1 tensor I2 tensor I4 to I5. And on the right hand side, actually you can take a basis uh, for this. This actually give a basis of this morphism space. So therefore, the F symbol is nothing but a, the, the coefficients in this basis representation. Um, we can also record the information of F symbols in the sense of F moves, namely the, the data of F symbols determines how to transform from the picture on the left, from the diagram on the left to the diagram on the right. Uh, actually, this transformation will be uh, guaranteed to be invertible due to the semi-simplicity of the fusion category. So therefore, it's easy to see that this allows you to change from one travel number tax diagram to any other travel number tax diagram. So it is a fact that every morphism in the fusion category can be written in, in, as a travel number tax diagram. So therefore, with the data of F moves, you can completely determine the structure of F symbols. But one immediate question you can notice is that for a, you can apply different sequence of F moves such that you can go from one diagram to the same and end in the same diagram. So there must be some equations popping up uh, generated because of this consistency issue. So we can take a look at this basic example <coughs> that for this picture, uh, for this morphism here, we can apply the F moves to the right part 
to the red part and reach to the diagram on the top right. And then we can apply the F move on the red part again to reach to a, new, a different uh, to a different diagram, and um, and uh, a different diagram. And then we can also apply a sequence of three uh, another sequence of three F moves to go from the picture on the bottom to the picture uh, on the top right. So. Since we need a consistency uh, verification, this will generate an equation in terms of the composition of these two F moves here on the right will, has to equal to the composition of the three F moves on the left. And this is called a Pentagon, this is a Pentagon equation. This is a consist consistency condition coming from one of the most basic example, but uh, it, is it is a theorem by my claim that these are sufficient, this is this will be sufficient to guarantee the consistency. So therefore, um, the most direct way to solve, uh, to construct a fusion category will be solve the Pentagon equations uh, for F symbols directly. But uh, not only uh, to construct fusion categories, the F symbol them also has important applications on their own. Uh, for instance, uh, this can give a state sum, a three manifold invariant. Uh, the state sum of F symbols will give a three manifold invariant in the Toro Vero TQFT. And also, this will give the Levin Wing Hamiltonian. In. So, it is an important, uh, it is an important uh, task to try to solve for F symbol, solve Pentagon equations for F symbol. But as we said at the very beginning, is very difficult because the system of equations is complicated in general. So this moves to the second part, which uh, I'm gonna talk about triangular presum equations, which is a new way that, uh, which is a new system of equations that one can expect to solve for F symbols step by step. So we will uh, make full use of the advantage of picture language in this here. Uh, for simplicity, we will assume that uh, in the category we studied, every simple, uh, every self-due simple object is symmetrically self-due. So the first step is that we can express the F symbols uh, with the following label uh, in terms of the value of a tetrahedron diagram. And then uh, we can take a, then given uh, uh, nine simple objects and the six morphisms, uh, it's not difficult to see that there will be two distinct approach to evaluate this triangular prism diagram. And the both of the evaluation will end it up in terms of the tetrahedron. Therefore, one can obtain an equation by equating these two values. Uh, such an equation will be called a triangular prism equations, short as TPE. So uh, let's see <clears throat> uh, in a little bit more details about how oh, question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello? Sorry, uh, I can't hear you. Uh, uh, can you hear me now? No, I can I, I can hear you speaking, but I cannot hear you what you're saying. Hear what you're saying. Oh, uh, um, look at your uh, diagram. Uh huh. Which is a square. Uh, you have three. Which are labeled by I one, I two, I three. Yeah. Uh, in general, in picture character, that's illegal because horizontal has ambiguity. When you draw the picture diagram, you always vertical. 
uh, Ben Khan, your audio is not working. Uh, I'm sorry. It's very, it's impossible to understand what you're saying. Uh, maybe I have a problem. Is that the same? Uh, let me try to read. Oh, that's not better. Can you type the question instead? Can you hear me? Yes, that's okay. So now you can hear me. Yes, now we can hear you. Okay, so uh, the issue is, uh, what I was trying to say is that in this diagram, you have three horizontal lines mm -hmm. with I1, I2, I3. In the most general setting, uh, you have an issue that this line has to be either drawing, going down or going up. Mm -hmm. And that could be different. And there are theories which you cannot, you know, make those two equal. So mm -hmm. it's not necessary this will cover every case. There are lots of cases which will be okay, but there are cases you cannot draw horizontal lines. You have to draw either going up or going down. Uh, yeah, they, they, they've only done it for special cases. Uh, well, no, 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 no. Uh, so uh, thanks for the question and thanks for pointing that out. So actually, we, in the general setup, we actually have a uh, formalism such that you have to change the picture a little bit such that every uh, there is no ambiguity from what you said there. Uh, we have a we have general we have general theorems about uh, in a in a general setup. So this is not exactly a, an envelope shaped diagram, but okay. uh, so, yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Yes. Yeah. So uh, yeah, thanks for pointing that out. I mean, in this talk, uh, I chose this way by extra assumption because this will make the picture uh, picture notation much easier to read and to draw, okay. as you can imagine. Okay. Does this uh, answer your question? Okay, so we should, yeah. Well, great. Thanks for uh, for the question, and um, now we we take a look at this uh, triangular prism picture, a diagram, and uh, there will be two evaluations, two distinct evaluations. Uh, so let's see them one by uh, one by one. The first evaluation is given uh, by this. Take a look at the red part. Um, in the, in this special case, in, in this case, in uh, with assumption we had, I mean, for simplicity, that uh, this red part you can think of as uh, behaves as an identity operator with respect to the travel number text diagram. Namely, if you have a travel number text and you compose with this, this doesn't really change the picture, so it stays the same. So this can be viewed as an identity operator. Therefore, it can be written as the uh, sum of the rank one projections from the basis vector. This is exactly what happened here. We can break down the three, the three horizontal line and rewrite them in, ter in terms of a summation. This is called the resolution of identity. And uh, after a little deformation of the picture, we will see that this is in the form of a, product, uh, a sum of product of two tetrahedrons, okay? And then another evaluation is given uh, in this way. So uh, for the red part in the middle, uh, we can, sorry about that. Uh, we can change that by rotating the picture 90 degrees with the, uh, with the, with the exact coefficient determined by the tetrahedron like this. So uh, we can apply the same a 90 degree rotation for all the three parts, then we can transfer the diagram on the right hand side to be a diagram like this. This can be directly evaluated in the fusion category, which is going to be some constant related to the quantum dimension. And as you can see, we have applied three such a transformation. Therefore, this will be ended up, this evaluation will be ended up with a product of three tetrahedrons. So, Given a triangular prism diagram like this, uh, which we call it the standard TPE configuration, uh, by equating the two evaluations, this will end it up as as an equation in terms of uh, tetrahedrons. As you can see, 
uh, this is, looks really similar to the Pentagon equation and what's the relation between them. So as a matter of fact, we have the free, we have the flexibility to choose the, the shape or the configuration of the triangular prism diagram with a special choice of the configuration, which we call it by PE here. Uh, this will exactly recover the Pentagon equation. Namely, let C be a fusion category, then the triangular prism equations given by this PE uh, triangular prism diagram will be exactly the Pentagon equation. So uh, as Chen Han just pointed out, I mean, in general, you cannot, uh, you have to change the picture. So uh, you cannot draw horizontal line in the most general case. So I want to point it out that this theorem actually is proved for the general case. So, uh, so what I mean exactly mean by here is that you have a triangular prism diagram uh, with change a little bit so such that it makes sense in the most general case. And then that equation coming from that will give you back exactly the Pentagon equations. Okay. <clears throat> so comparing these two diagrams that uh, what we can actually prove that assume the F symbols are actually a multilinear among uh, on the morphisms, then solving the triangular prism equations coming from the standard TPE is actually equivalent to solving the ones coming from Pentagon equation, uh, sorry, coming from this PE configuration. Therefore, combine this together to solve for F symbols uh, instead of solving, well, instead of going for uh, Pentagon equations, we can actually using this uh, system of triangular prism equations. And the flexibility allows uh, of choosing the configuration actually allows us uh, make it possible to, sorry, just from the triangular prism configuration itself, this actually provides some us uh, insights of the complexity of the equations. Namely, you can try, you can um, determine directly which set of equations are much uh, easier to solve. Um, therefore, one can hope to design a strategy such that uh, you can solve for F sim, you can choose a small set of equations with a small set of F symbols first so, and solve them uh, step by step. So this um, strategy of solving F symbols actually has, uh, we have actually used this strategy to solve for F symbols of many examples that we're interested in. And uh, uh, we're interested in, and then also help us to answer uh, some long-standing questions, uh, which I will talk about in the uh, next, uh, which I'll talk about uh, in a few minutes, in a few seconds, actually. Um, but before I talk about the applications, uh, let me summarize the uh, strategy, the systematic strategy in a, in a, in a formal way. That is that uh, we want to, uh, for, for, to solve for F symbols, the very first thing to do is that we want to determine a complexity for F symbols and the triangular prism equations. So with such a complexity in the hand, uh, we can first find a set of, uh, we can find a set of indeterminate F symbols first, and then try to find a relatively simple system uh, of triangular prism equations. In general, we would like this uh, system of equations to be overdetermined. Namely, the numbers of equations will be bigger than the numbers of F symbols here. Then we can try to solve E for V. Then there, are, of course, there are two cases. If there's no solution, then you don't have a, uh, you cannot find a fusion category. If there is a solution, then you have, uh, then you can go back to the first step uh, and find another set of indeterminate F symbols and keep doing this until you exhaust all uh, F symbols. Then this will give you the, data, the complete data of a fusion category. Okay. <clears throat> so um, now, uh, well, of course, I mean, such a, a general localization strategy doesn't say too much, 
in, in particular, when you're working on with a specific example, you have to design a localization strategy uh, based on, uh, according to the example on its own uh, to achieve a maximal efficiency to solve F symbols. And uh, we can take a look at uh, such an example by looking at our applications of this method to the near group category. So <clears throat> the near group category was first introduced by uh, Masaki Izumi in 1993. And the reason uh, it is called a near group category uh, because as you can see here in this definition, uh, all the simple objects except for one are actually invertible, labeled, uh, labeled by a group element from a finite abelian group. And the fusion rule among them are exactly the, are exactly the group law. The only extra object is uh, we denoted by rho here. And the involving fusion rule is displayed as these two equations. And there's one extra parameter here is the multiplicity of this object of rho appear in the tensor product of rho square. So this if this multiplicity is exactly m, then we say a, a fusion category has this, this fusion rule, a near group category of type G plus m. So many near group fusion category appears in nature and uh, many fusion categories is actually near group categories. For instance, we have in general, the uh, Tamabra Yamagami categories as a type of G plus zero for G uh, finite abelian group. Uh, in particular, the Isimoto will be one of the first example of this family. Uh, we also have the extended uh, D5 and uh, the module category from the symmetric group S3 and alternating group A4 coming arise as the new group category. But the most, in, the examples that, which is interesting, uh, most interesting to people is that this uh, three new group categories that the A4 subfactor, the A4, E6 subfactor, and Izumi 3 subfactor, they arises as Zn plus n for n equals to one, two, three. This is interesting because this uh, could potentially be three mem uh, be the first three members of an infinite family, of a hypothetically infinite family. This is referred uh, as the hypothetical family of Izumis, which is a near group of type which, which is a near group of type G plus N, where G is a finite abelian group and N is exactly the order of the group. Um, so it has intrigued many people trying to construct this infinite family in general. And in a series of paper by Izumi, he uh, proposed a an approach using Kohn's algebra technique. So uh, let chi be a non-trivial bi-character. Then he started with this a function A, uh, two functions A and B on the group G and a complex number satisfying the following conditions. Then with this initial data in, the, in your hand, you can actually define uh, anamorphisms on the Kohn's algebra. And then moreover, if it is satisfying the following extra equations, the initial data satisfy the extra equations, then you can realize this uh, anamorphisms as a sector, correct, sis, correct system of sectors in, in the type three factors such that have the correct intertwining space, which give back the fusion, uh, give the near group category G plus M. So, uh, this is a brilliant approach of uh, constructing a new group category by using the Kohn's algebra, but also from the categorical level, it is kind of mysterious. So as you can see that, uh, this set of equations are far fewer than the, the actual Pentagon equations. Uh, why this equations will be sufficient? What's the magic behind it to determine that the existence of such a new group category. So many people have asked uh, that does there exist a direct construction from the equations of Izumis to direct to the near group category without going through the Kohn's algebra approach? And what does these equations mean? So I'll I'll talk about 
uh, provided our answers to these questions and see the progress that we have uh, for a study of new, new group categories. So as we said, we're gonna apply the localization strategy uh, we mentioned earlier. And the very first thing is that we need to determine a good complexity for F symbols and the, the TP equations. So uh, as you can see that the invertible objects, uh, the, the parts of, with, of the invertible objects from the near group category can be considered as simple ones. So therefore, a good, the natural complexity we chose here is to be the number of invertible, invertible objects involved. Uh, to be precise, let's take a tetrahedron uh, like this. Uh, this uh, will be three edges labeled by an invertible object, while the unlabeled strings here, we, uh, this is referred to the, um, the extra object row. So this tetrahedron, this F symbol, will be viewed as simpler from this one because it has uh, more numbers of invertible objects involved. And uh, this one will be more complicated than the, the other, than the first two because there's only one invertible object uh, involved. So this gives a complexity of the F symbols. And, and well, an immediate question that you might want to ask is that what exactly do we mean by these pictures here? We have talked about that tetrahedrons represent F symbols with a, um, the correct, uh, well, the three travel number text, uh, well, the travel number text here represented morphisms. So for instance, for this picture, this, say this travel number text, uh, it's not too bad because this actually related to the morphism space from G, tensor rho to tensor rho from rho tensor g to rho. From the fusion rule, we know this is a one-dimensional space. So therefore, you can make a canonical choice for such trial number text. Namely, for as long as the trial number text, at least one edge is labeled by a group element, you can always find, have a good uh, canonical choice for the morphism without ambiguity. But for this one, uh, the story is a little different because this are supposed to be belongs to the home space rho tensor rho to rho. From the fusion rule, we know that this is uh, the the space. This home space is actually of n dimension. Sorry, mm. it's n dimensional. So we need to clarify that what do we mean by this picture here? We need to make a good understanding of the home space. Uh, row tensor row to row. So let's take an, an arbitrary morphism in this home space. Then you can apply, you can compose this morphism index by, the, uh, by an invertible object such that you obtain another morphism. It's easy to see that this actually this actually defines a linear. This actually defines a linear map uh, indexed by G. Moreover, you can show that this is actually is gives an action of the group uh, on this home space, and we denote it by pi sub x. And you can stack in the this uh, H diagram from this x direction, and of course you can do this on the two other directions, which we call the y direction and the z direction. And uh, not only we have these three representations and the commutation relations are, can be explicitly computed given by this formula. Well, the chi is a, a symmetric bi character that we started with. So in the case of Zn plus n, things becomes uh, really good because we have a Unique, unique choice in some sense for this uh, representations. Uh, we can make a good choices of the basis such that the three representations are exactly generated by the uh, poly matrices on n dimensional space. That's why we actually gave the name X, Y, Z dimension uh, directions. So uh, to be clear, uh, we can choose a basis 
be uh, indexed by the group element and represented by this picture, such that the the z act uh, the the three actions uh, are exactly given by this formula. Uh, moreover, the rotation uh, on this home space are, is, is also uniquely determined. So this will give us uh, the flexibility to choose the configuration we would like to have. Okay. So with this information in hand, we have a uh, uh, we have a, um, so currently we have the in, some uh, prepared information is that we have this function a of h and a complex number c. Uh, this the function a help us to complete and determine the action uh, of the three actions and give us a nice choices of the basis in this home space, and then the complex number c give us uh, help us uniquely determine the rotation. So with this two a and with this a and a c, uh, then we can make a choices for the uh, for the simple f symbols uh, given as here. So up to now we have we can provide the choices. We can provide a choice for uh, f symbols with at least one of the edges is labeled by an invertible object. And uh, the most complicated one, namely the one that has six, uh, all the six are labeled by the object row, uh, cannot be determined by A and C. And we need the following lemma to determine it. In this lemma, there will be a function uh, beta on G uh, such that we can have this, uh, appeared in this formula. With the help of this formula, we can determine that the F symbols with no invertible objects given by this formula. Uh, therefore, now let's revisit the localization strategy we have talked about, we would like to apply it here. <clears throat> First, uh, all the, the F symbols are uh, listed from the simple from simple to diff, to complicated in this table, and from the previous discussion, we actually know that uh, there is for the new group category Z M plus N, there is only one. Uh, all the few, all the F symbols are completely determined by the function beta, namely the function beta will be the essential uh, variables. For us to determine the struct to determine the new group category, and then uh, we can also take uh, we can also go through the uh, triangular presum equations according to the complexity we chose. Uh, in particular, we have uh, put them into uh, Two big, two big class. One is called the block, one is called the boundary. And let me explain the terminology here a little bit. Uh, so the picture on the, on the left, hand, the triangular presum diagram from the left hand side, uh, it's a block one. You can see from the fusion rule, if you remember the right hand side, then because of the choice of the configuration, uh, the right hand side of the triangular presum equations will be just a single term without any summation. Uh, while on the, for the triangular presum diagram on the right, we will actually have uh, from the fusion rule, you know that that's not the case. The right hand side of the equation will be a sum. So theoretically speaking, then this one will be much simpler. Uh, the left one will be much simpler to solve in general for, uh, than the right one. And then, okay. <clears throat> then for the list of all the triangular presum equations, we can check them from the simplest to the most complicated step by step. So, following a direct computation, one can actually show that 
all the three, uh, all this uh, checked triangular presum equations are satisfied um, without involving the essential variable beta. So this is what will always be true uh, with respect, based on the basic choice of the bi character and the function A and the complex number C. So the only ones that give essential equations to determine near group category are the left two, are the, are the two diagram left. So uh, we can write down the equations for this two, uh, from this two, we can write down the triangular prism equations in terms of the essential variable beta. And as you can see that we have run through, we have exhausted all possible, Paul, we have exhausted all possible F symbols and the triangular presum equations. Therefore, from the previous theorem we proved, we can show that for the near group category Zn plus N, this is completely determined by this data. That uh, for, this is completely determined by the data, a complex number C and a function, uh, and a function beta on this group satisfy the following equations here which we call it the STPE. Uh, if you're familiar with Izumi's work, you probably can feel that, you can have the feeling that this looks really, uh, this looks like uh, Izumi's equation. Actually, uh, we can show that both Izumi's equations and our equations are triangular presum equations for a certain configuration. So remember that we show that uh, solving the uh, solving a family of triangular presum equations will be eventually equivalent to solving uh, pentagon equations. Therefore, Izumi's equations is not is not mysterious mysterious anymore in the categorical level because it is exactly the pentagon equations is exactly equivalent to the pentagon equations. The difference from the the difference between Pentagon equations and uh, is that both Izumi's approach and our approach have made full use of the uh, group symmetry coming of, of the near group category. And uh, our syst system of equations, uh, the, the difference between the, our system of equations to Izumi's equations actually guarantee a better performance in the aspects of computation. Uh, in, the, in the paper in 2015 uh, by Evans and Gannon, they actually provided numerical solutions to Izumi's equation uh, for all the finite abelian group with order less or equal than TOF. And with respect to our standard, um, with, with respect to our set of equations, we actually have algebraic solutions uh, for the family Zn plus n for n less or equal than 15. So we are, we are able to give a, a grammar basis for the system uh, for the system of equations STPE. Uh, for uh, for example, we listed the the grammar basis we obtained for n equals seven here. As you can see, the first element in this grammar basis is a single variable polynomial. So this gives a complete algebraic solution rather than numerical solutions. So we hope that uh, th this will shed more lights on solve constructing the infinite family. Uh, another interest, subtle, subtle but interest, and also interesting point is that in our setup of the system of equations, we actually do not assume a unitary structure on this. Uh, the, uh, what we mean by unitary structure is that you need to define an evolution on this category such that for every morphism we will have a positive we will have a positive definite type condition and we can prove that for the new group category zn plus n there is at most a unique evolution you can define such that uh, it makes possible to become a unitary fusion category and the, the, def the def definition of the, of the evolution will be given by this two formula. And one immediate condition, the, the only condition that makes this to become uh, this dagger while provides a positive definite structure is the equation uh, listed here. 
So uh, according to the computation we have, we actually have solutions from our system, from our STPE actually does not satisfy this equation. That means that it is possibly produce non-unitary solutions for uh, non-unitary constructions for near group category. Okay. Let me summarize, uh, give a summary of uh, the talk. The first thing, the most important thing is that we proposed a new system of equations, which we call triangular presum equations, as a new method to solve for F symbols. The new perspe this perspective of triangular presum equations allows us to find a good complexity for F symbols, so we can design a localization strategy to solve uh, F symbols step by step. This has works uh, perfectly well in the new group category, and this and also this provides a categorical approach to construct near group category without going through Kant algebra, and th therefore this answers a long uh, standing question. And at, as we mentioned in the end, uh, we have singled out the unitary condition from the from the Izumi's equation. Therefore, we can produce non-unitary near group categories. And well, this localization strategy has worked very well in the near group category because it has processed a, a really good symmetry of the group. But uh, for other category, for other fusion categories which doesn't process a good group symmetry, one can still design uh, some good localization strategy. We do have examples. Uh, which we call it F uh, 200, F210 here. Uh, in this case, uh, we also provided a complete localization strategy to solve for this. This is um, make, making full use of the, which have a completely different flavor. Um, well, uh, we will hopefully we will have all this result uh, written down uh, in the papers that we're working on now and be able to uh, present it to you um, in a few weeks. And thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Prince, for a very nice talk. There must be some questions. Uh, Yes, yeah, so uh, first I'll have to leave pretty soon, so uh, let me ask quickly. So, mm -hmm. uh, Jeffrey, can you bring up the last slide? Yes. Uh, 27. Um, 27. Yes. Oh. Uh. So, uh, maybe one more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I can imagine there is a small problem for the following. So, you know, if you give me a fusion rule, a growth, growth and decay, mm -hmm. and uh, you start with a part of the suggest symbols, and then you find a solution, and then I completely agree, uh, you know, there are solutions. But the question I have, and I normally I do have this problem is, now suppose you don't find solutions. You know, you start with part of suggest symbol, Mm -hmm. uh, then you try to extend, you know, in your case, the last non-abelian object, and you didn't find a solution. And then, I don't think in general, mm -hmm. you can conclude there are no categorification. So the problem is that, you know, the suggest symbols which you normalized depends on a choice of a basis. Mm -hmm. If there are no extension with respect to this choice of a basis, it does not mean there are no extensions in general. I think it does occur. There are cases mm -hmm. that you, you fix part of the suggest symbol. You don't have solution for the, all the pentagons, but actually if you change the one which you fixed, you do get solutions. So mm -hmm. I'm not 100% sure this will happen, but potentially it can. So then for your last statement, you know, provide a completely, uh, well, what I'm saying is that it seems to be this strategy is good mm -hmm. to find solutions, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily complete to classify. Do you know what I mean? This 
this mm -hmm. the, the strategy you have, you know, which is fixed part of the 6 year symbol. Mm -hmm. I think we have solution. I agree completely. You do get solution. The problem is that if you don't get solution, I don't necessarily agree that there will be no solution for categorification because you might just choose a bad basis to start with for the partial security symbol. So it's just a general phenomenon which I know it can happen. And uh, for your particular case, I don't know. But I'm just saying. If you're so far, what you said is is all fine. You know, you just provide categor categorification. But if you want to go one step further, mm -hmm. I don't know. You guys have addressed the issue that, uh, you know, you can always choose the six G symbol so that on the invertible objects, they can take this form. That, that's that's an extra thing uh, I have not seen, but I just want to point out. That's a sure. that's Sorry, a. Um, in the end, you said about uh, you can take the choices of involving with invertible objects. What what do you mean by that? Well, so if I understand your strategy is, uh, you know, yeah. if you want to solve the pentagons, yeah, and you choose see a subfusion category, yeah. you find you solve the pentagons for this subfusion category, mm -hmm. and then you try to extend this solution to the full, you know, growth and decline. I'm, all I'm saying is that when you fix the six year symbols of the subfusion ring, mm -hmm. in the case you don't find extension, it does not mean this fusion growth ring cannot be categorified. It just means that your particular choice might be a bad starting point. So you cannot conclude, you know, when you have no solution, then the growth and growth ring cannot be categorified. Because you don't have extension. So here we don't take a particular choice. Uh, in this talk, mm -hmm. we, we didn't mention some actual parameters. We only talk about F symbols and some tetrahedral values, but they are actually actual parameters. Mm -hmm. Like well, when like, you when you say you know like certain sixteen symbols is one certain you know is your normal modified. When you say certain you know symbol is one certain symbol is the quantum dimension that's mm -hmm. a normalization which you did and uh, that's not necessarily mm -hmm. compatible well, with you know, always the, the the point is this notation works well for a uh, new group for the even part of subfactors and in general we need to be very careful about the pivotal structure and there are actual scalars come uh, give, uh, as actual parameters but those parameters are somehow from our point of view are uh, uh, they have a lower complex compared to the F symbols or compared to the value of tetrahedrons. And in the general case, the, the tetrahedron is actually not unique. It's not just of this one form. And it will depend on the pivotal structure we choose. So there will be actual scalars. And actually for the previous... Uh, that, so, okay, uh, that might explain, you know, so all, you know, I think that that's agree with what I'm saying, which is that, you know, when you do this, we, if you want to apply this strategy, instead of to categorification, to classification, mm -hmm. and you have to prove something extra that yes, yes, if, we do. if there yes. is a categorification, you can always oh. choose the secure symbol of certain form or subcategory in order to make a statement of a complete classification. Yes, for example, the, for the pivotal structure, like in your paper, uh, there is a wide extra identity between the the scalar pi for simple object i and the f symbols. There is an actual identity to show the fusion category is uh, like a pivotal category. Okay. And we do need such actual scalars for the general case. And for near group case, this can be simplified because it comes from the even part of subfactor. And then the, uh, the non-invertible object is symmetric self two. And in that case, there is no ambiguity between the left uh, cap and the right cap, between two different caps. And then we can abuse this notation tetrahedron. And in general, we, 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 need, we do write a very special shape of the diagram to show certain uh, triangle prism configuration give, uh, uh, give exactly the same as the original Plantinga equation. And that shape is actually very tricky. It, locally, it's, it's, it has, it's twisted by those uh, like cap cap diagram. We have to choose that carefully. And certainly we do have actual parameters, like uh, 
for example, the problem uh, from this three indicator are the pivotal scalars, and also we need actual parameter like to define the rotation. And uh, all those parameters is it will be involved in what we said. The F symbol is multilinear, namely when we we will choose the basis locally in this tetrahedron, and then this value has to be multilinear with respect to choice of basis. And under that condition, we do have actual scalar, and then the uh, triangle prism equation will be equivalent to pentagon equation up to this linear change of basis. And then that will give not just a construction of certain category with certain special choice of like pivotal structure, but that is actually a classification. Okay, good. So uh, anyway, thanks. So uh, I think thank you Richard, for the talk. I have to go to another meeting. So uh, you have to examine your student. I know, though no, it's uh, it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we should be very happy or she to that they're finishing. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye-bye. So are there more questions? Hey, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so hi. So very interesting talk. Um, and of course, it's very nice that you have this uh, um, kind of direct connection. Uh, but still kind of interesting. Do you know the connection with the Kuntz algebra? Because uh, what, what your construction reflects in the Kuntz algebra, maybe it's some sub-algebra or maybe it's some kind of interesting partial isometries and... Uh, so what happened is that uh, for this uh, new group category, um, well, sorry, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what happened is that, uh, Izumi used this Kuhn's algebra approach. Namely, he can, starting from this ABC initial data we talk about, uh, ABC, okay. such that uh, two functions and a complex number that construct anamorphisms on Kuhn's algebra. And then, mm -hmm. with all the conditions satisfied, they actually can be realized given as a sectors on the type three factors. And then, if okay. it give you the correct new group, give you the correct category. So, our approach is actually sort of doing the uh, of this thing or on the, on, the, on the fundamental level of categories, trying to construct this uh, category directly. So you see what I'm saying here is that uh, what we have done is that stay away from Kant algebra and give, a more, uh, give the uh, fundamental explanation um, why the system of, why solving such a, a system of equation like Izumi's well, ours actually works to construct uh, a, a fusion category. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Of course, it's very interesting, but I mean, still, it has to be some kind of intrinsic connection because I think it would be kind of interesting on itself, but just maybe because I like these algebras, but uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, you didn't look what is the connection, right? Um, okay, Greg, do you have a comment? Well, this connection is the original work of Izumi. Mm -hmm. And the point of the question is not using this connection to construct this category. Yeah. Because uh, um, it's kind of a mystery why we can use such a small set of equation to, cons uh, I mean, to somehow ensure the large set of Pentagon equation. Yeah. And uh, the previous method is using a, a Kuhn's algebra, and then you can get a factor, type three factor, and then implement other morphisms on the factor using those equations. And some magic happened that give you a sub factor, and it's somehow by module category or the system of sectors give you this near group category. And uh, the major point is understanding why this happened, why this very short list of equation will give you such stronger condition. And actually, in general, if you want to solve a Pentagon equation for large drug fusion ring, it's very hard. But like for uh, Ivan and Gaiden have done earlier that they can build really large new group categories. They can compute, they can solve those equations numerically. And this is somehow 
a difficult problem for large round fusion rings if you use Pentagon equation. But for Izumi's equation, this system is better. And here our point is, uh, when we improve that from a different point of view, uh, we have actual flexibility to choose the TP configuration. Then we can choose the choice of F symbols. So actually not really F symbols. Somehow we can choose a different choice of variables and different choice of equations. It's kind of substitution of variables, but on a more complicated level. And then here we have a better choice of the equations. Like for Izumi's equation, if you look at the degree three term on this page, it's a sum. It's the sum B T plus H B B three sum. Um, sorry, degree three term for this necessary parameter. And in our equation, this degree three term has only one item. And that's a simplification. So uh, here we are not trying to recover the Kuhn's algebra, but uh, we are trying to understand what happened in his Kuhn's algebra methods. And the point is, in his Kuhn's algebra methods, he has a very special direction to construct the basis and the group action because it's natural from the view of Kuhn's algebra. Like you have this multiplication, the usual multiplication, and there is a special direction to choose your basis and also to choose your like, F symbols. But here we, we have the flexibility to choose that because we are using actual spherical isotopy in this example coming from subfactor planarity theory. And then we are taking advantage of that to find a good choice of variables and uh, equations. And actually that's really important since uh, for the most complicated equation, uh, the highest degree term, degree three term has only one element. And that means, and actually this, the Chang we've mm -hmm. lost your audio. So, well, sort of. Yeah, any, anyway, okay. thank you very much. Yeah, it's yeah. clear. So, so at one point, David Evans was here. I don't know if he has any comment. I'm not sure he's still in the session. Maybe not. Because he has another seminar afterwards. So we lost Cheng Wei. Well, yeah, just to quickly finish what he said is that, uh, well, the system of equations is different from Izumi's, which uh, actually does have a better performance computationally. That's coming from our flexibility of the triangular prism uh, formulations to give us a flexibility to change different system of equations. And this one has a particular good performance on the computational level at this moment. And then we can expect that this might shed some really some lights on try to solving this uh, try to construct this thing from the family. So, do you know uh, in what case how general the TPE are in being equivalent to the Pentagon equation in the examples aside from the ones you considered? Oh, uh, that's saying that's a good question. So maybe I didn't make that clear. So. Uh, as John Han pointed out, I mean, those diagrams we draw is a kind of special shape that involves this vertical horizontal line. And as I said, beginning in this talk, we assume that the category we started has a certain a further assumption. But actually, we have a, a framework to study this t, uh, triangular presum equations as draw this uh, picture legitimately in the general fusion category. So therefore, this theorem actually only assumes fusion categories. It doesn't have any, it's not for only special cases. But the only, the difference will be, uh, we cannot draw the picture in this way. We have to change, deform this picture such that there is no horizontal line. You can read everything from top to bottom. And that, uh, that the, the difference is that that will make the picture much difficult to, to draw and present. So that's why when, when I gave the talk, I chose the, the further assumption such that uh, it is legitimate to draw horizontal line like this. So, the, the, so the, the point is that this theorem actually works for general fusion category. There's no 
assumptions, extra assumption. So you can always find a special triangular presum configuration such that is you can recover the panic the the real Pentagon equation from it. So is there any other discussion? I'm sorry that my my computer was power off. So. <laughs> You have an, any other comment, Chenglei? No, I think this is pretty good. And uh, the reason we didn't draw that picture is because it's really complicated. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the right uh, figure for, uh, for the Pentagon equation. Uh, I'm not sure why Lu Yinxian has that picture on his computer. If he has, he can show it. It's a really complicated one. Mm. So if we sh use that kind of picture in this talk, it will be messed up. But indeed, as John Han said, there are some actually extra trick, uh, tricky parameters. They are not somehow like F symbols. Mm -hmm. And for new group, the very good thing is those extra scalars, we can assume them to be one because they, we are considering case they are coming from the even part of some factors. And that's the somehow the most interesting case we are considering. And indeed, if we want a classification, the there will be actual scalars. Good, not so in actual variables. Well, Ranchin, thank you again for a very interesting talk and we look forward to the papers. What's the time scale for the papers coming up? Uh, well, I, I say in a few weeks, that's the, um, uh, so, well, a large part of those, those three papers, all of those papers uh, have been finished in some sense. So let's say in a, a, a few weeks to a month, let's say. Great. Well, thank you. Thanks. So see you next week and David Evans will talk then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.